What's up guys, this is General Geibel. This is gonna be a very short video. I'm gonna show you the power of contact in terms of reusing your sounds, in that case, your kicks. So before we get started, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell button so you get notified when something new is up. And I would also like to ask you to go to my Facebook slash General Geibel and click there on like and activate to see my posts first. Also here a little info for you. I started a new Facebook group. It's the General Geibel Hard Dance Producer Network. It's as the name already says, it's a network where you find like-minded producers who really want to improve their stuff, find a nice community, you find like-minded producers and get your questions answered and as well might find some new friends to collaborate with. So check it out, General Geibel Hard Dance Producer Network on Facebook. So let's get started in the video. So as you can see, I opened up already contact and I prepared already just one sample. It's uh, just a kick sample. So we are now on 120 BPM. That's why it doesn't sound as smooth as it should be, but it doesn't matter. So let's load up that kick sample. By contact, if you just drag it in, like I just did, it will be mapped to C3 right away. Um, let's move it to G-sharp, since the original pitch of that kick is in G-sharp. What we're gonna use is the wavetable. Here is the wavetable position. Still playing the same G-sharp I played before. So what we're gonna do right away is like pitch it down by two octaves. And as you can hear it already starts starts already to be more like a dubstep sound or something. Here you can also tweak the wavetable a little bit. Let's say you go with asymmetry plus. And then also the form and the face will take effect. Now it would be nice to have uh, some modulation in that position. So what we can do is uh, make a right click and apply an LFO on that position or we can do an envelope. Um, in that case I might want to use the LFO and let's maybe go for a sine wave. So now it's like full on, we don't want too much of it. So we got like the right range and we find our new LFO here. So we're gonna sync it to our tempo. We're gonna also change the face so the the LFO starts on the on top. And we want also re-trigger to be applied. It means like every time we hit the key, the LFO starts from the same position. With the fade, we can also make the sound fading in a little bit. So, nice. Uh, as next, I would like to have low pass filter and let's go for the ladder filter. And as we know, those filters make a lot of sense if you apply some distortion afterwards. So we are gonna do that. Let's go with the regular distortion. And also here on that filter, I would like to have an, some modulation. In that case, I would like to apply an envelope. Feels like um, the LFO could be slightly slower. 
and the attack as well. So since we got already like a lot of drive, we're pretty much at the end. We can push just the gain of the filter into the drive. And I guess we could also have a little bit of room information just to have it a little bit more stereo. That's a little bit too much, but we're gonna get there. Now it's getting like really metallic. It's, I don't mind, that's something I would like to have. So let's give it also a little bit of high end. I would like to add a little bit of lo-fi after everything, so we kind of make it mm, around 12 bit. Makes it sounding a little bit gradient. And then just some final saturation just to make it sound a little bit more together. For now, we are pretty good with with that effect in, in contact. So we can also start doing some interesting tweaking on our Ableton side. So the OTT compressor is always a very interesting thing to do, especially in sounds like that, because it really pulls out a lot of nice high end. When you go to that type of sound, you also might want to experiment with the amp. Any kind of guitar amp, I found out that this one from Ableton is very cool for stuff like that. So yeah, just a little quick tip how you can make some unique sounds. I would highly advise you to get really into detail with that because like if you go in depth and like make use of all this modulation possibilities within contact and also the possibilities to process everything within contact, uh, you can get some really decent, decent sounds, which are hard to recreate with any kind of synths, especially because it's sampled based in the first place. Um, and also don't forget here, those parameters, you can also, all of them here, you can also modulate. So try experimenting, you know, bounce out a lot of sounds. Um, it's definitely very useful to have an archive of like own unique sounds. And yeah, enjoy your time in the studio. Till next time. Bye-bye.